Okay, welcome back people to Let's Play Tyranny. Last time we took a beating. We also found out a bit about uh, who's been uh, selling iron from underneath our noses. See? Right, the Wizard of Rot was using the Harchian Bronze to funnel weapons to the Vendrian Guard. That's what we found out. So, this time... I think we're, um... I think we're gonna be taking a look up here, right? On the second uh, floor. I think we've been... Well, we haven't been inside the buildings. Down on the left there. But we want to make the rounds and... Ooh. How does this uh, match up? Pretty well, actually. Although, it has less armor penetration. Uh, than both of those. Will do. Weapons he has there. So, that's no good. He's already struggling of to pierce the armor of uh, enemies. Sorry, I can't. Here is uh, Melita. Speak with Melita. Good day to you, she says. All right. She is named NPCs should have something to say. All right. <laughs> I think that's a rule. I think that's a rule of RPG games. You can't have a named all? NPC without this. nothing to say, right? Okay, there's something over here as well. Beer. Alright, we'll take the beer. Boteus! We'll speak to him. Welcome, friend. The merchant uh, cries to you, his belt jingling with rings. He waves his arms about in a dramatic presentation of his wares. What brings you to my humble trading post? Have I... Have a certain something in mind or just browsing? Well, let's see what you got. Most well, certainly. Oh, he's Forgebound. Forgebound Hammer. Forgebound Apprentice Armor. Sigil of Fire. Sigil of Volcanic Weapon? What is this? This world contains a magical accent which causes materi a material force spell to grant burning strikes to uh, that damage targets in a line. Wait, what? Burning strikes that damage targets in a line. Well, we'll take it. Unfortunately, it didn't have um, anything besides that. It's okay. Let's uh, give these uh, items to Lantry so he can... Actually, I don't need to do that. I can just learn them by right-clicking. So as long as I have Lantry highlighted, it's fine. Alright, so we got the Sigil of Fire, we got the Thing of Bleeding. Um, accent of bleeding, or whatever you call those things. Right, volcanic weapon. And what else did we get? Sigil of rooting. Alright, so fire. Mantle of flames, immune to frozen. Oh, it's, uh, it's like, uh, yeah. Creates a fiery aura around the target that damages foes and removes frozen from allies. Real spell surge. Well, what about, uh, here we go, flash fire. Bleeding. Spell surge, right, frost fire. We don't need that. Didn't I uh, get some other spells as well? Let's see here. 
Here's something. Right, sigil of piercing of volleys. Kind of makes me want to um, go like this, and then oh, I can't add bleeding from the stone thing. I was hoping I could uh, have that unsettled core and add in the bleeding thing, but I can't do that. I can do it on the giant boulder. Or on the stone spike. I don't know. I'll have a look at that later. It. It's uh, very complicated. The spell spell system in this game. I was uh, thinking that maybe I should have been playing this game as a mage. Hmm. You know, given uh, given the complexities and stuff, so I could sort of explore it. But I don't know if I'd have the patience actually. And besides, I'm not starting over now, right? I'm uh, halfway into this game. I don't, know. I don't know if we're actually halfway into this game, but we should be, that's what I'm saying. Alright, let's have a look and see what's in here then. Well, there's Phaedra. Let's have a look and see what she's got in terms of loot. Oh, she's got some good loot. Let's talk to Phaedra. A bright-faced woman greets you as you approach. Welcome to Lithian's Crossing Wanderer. My name is Phaedra, and this is my beautiful wife, Dea. She indicates the stone-faced blonde woman standing next to her, who holds up her hand in a quick greeting. Brings you to town. So she has a wife, huh? They're uh, awfully progressive in uh, the ancient times. <laughs> Is there anything I... Uh, hmm, well, tell me about the Lethian's Crossing. I've lived here most of my life, but honestly, I'm not sure if there's much to say. She looks contemplative. Uh, we're uh, a center of trade and waypoints for travelers. The walls are a little scary, but you get used to them over time. She looks at, at Dea. What about you, dear? There shrugs, her expression never changing. What is there to say? The town is alright, but living under the thumb of an occupying force makes it hard to truly relax. Phaedra puts her hand on Dea's shoulder and Dea sighs. Sorry, we couldn't be more help. Phaedra shrugs, right. You haven't always lived there. Several days before Karos' invasion, I moved away from Lethian's Crossing. Bringing the granddaughter of Leth being the granddaughter daughter of Lethian came with a responsibility I wasn't ready for. I met Dea in the Bastard City and decided to stay for a while. We were living in the Bastard City when we heard uh, about Karos' forces moving into the tears. So we took that as our motivation to move, she laughs. And I think we got out of there at just the right time. We traveled a bit, with a couple of caravans, but nothing really seemed like home until I returned to Lethian's Crossing. You never realize how much you can miss a place until you've been away for a while. She wraps her arms around Dea and squeezes. But she's really taken with her. Uh, but I could live anywhere as long as this one is with me. Yeah. She's really taken with her. Doesn't look like she reciprocates much, though. Maybe she's just shy. Phaedra. It's true that trade hasn't been as vibrant here recently, but I'm sure it's simply a temporary setback. The merchants will sing and dance for you, trying to convince you that their supplies are unaffected, but everyone is feeling it. I have faith that the world will set itself right soon enough. People call me a fool, but I don't see the benefit in bemoaning your fate. And, uh, let's see, you take life, you take what life hands you, hands you and make make it work. Yeah, that's a healthy attitude. You're Lethian's granddaughter, eh? One of many, I suspect. 
but I'm the only one who knows, who only one anyone knows about. And before you ask, no, Eldian is not my father. Perhaps you haven't heard, but my grandmother wasn't exactly the settling down type. What's your opinion on the Bronze Brotherhood? Those were the guys we um, removed, if I remember correctly. I haven't had any real problems with them. They might be a little rough around the edges, but they do seem to be trying to help the city. Oh, shit. They can all hang! Daya interrupts, her face showing the first bit of true emotion since the conversation started. I've seen nothing but miseries where they interfere. If you have the coin, they'll do anything. They're thieves and murderers, and I can't wait to see them trampled. She emphasizes her words by spitting on the ground between her feet. Daya, Phaedra says, consoling her. I'm sorry about that. I do the best to make our lives here as easy as I can. But there is only so much you can do to alleviate the pain of the past. I don't think that will ever be fixed. I say, thank you for your time. Any time, traveler, Fedra says happily. If you need something else, just let me know. Oh, she didn't even recognize me as a fate binder of Tunan. And well, maybe she did, but she did just she didn't let it on. Or let on that she knew, at any rate. Seems strange that she would strange that she would be so open with me if she didn't recognize me as a fate binder, right? I mean people are so scared shitless um, of the fate binders and whatnot that they'll probably do just about anything. Alright, here's another house. Let's uh, have a look over here before we continue inside that house. Some scrolls and whatnot. Cool. I would, um, hmm, I, I would very much like to rest. I'm hoping, well, maybe I should go back to the spire, actually. Yeah, maybe I should. This wall appears to have been damaged years ago, but was never properly repaired. And these guys don't have much to say. Found a great bow. And a uh, iron glaive. Well, this great bow. Maybe Verse can get it? Oh, no, she has that uh, grave bow. Right. She has the magical stuff. No reason to get that done. Oh, we can talk to Settler. Will do. It's a fine day, as long as you don't think about the armies beyond the horizon, or the bane lurking in the old walls. Talk to the settler here as well. The old walls are dangerous, so I wouldn't recommend going inside. Forgebound won't sell anything to us settlers. What do you need? Magical hatchet? Maybe some, uh, some, uh, you know, tongs of ruin? Fucker can't even fix his own wall house. There's a wall there. Iron javelin. It looks like the loot Sorry. in this game is not only randomized but also leveled. We seem to be finding a oh secret. Interesting. We seem to be finding a lot more uh, stuff. Iron warhammer. A lot more rare stuff now than we used to. Can't interact with that. Oh. During the clear mornings, the western waterfall reflects the rising sun in a beautiful display of color. Yeah. It's like a rainbow. Good riddance to these uptight, uptight beast rudders. I suppose he was talking about the uh, forge bound. Let's sit inside here. No, not the forge bound. The the mercenaries. Was that the crimson spears or something like that? It's Callion. Speak to Callion. The young man hangs his head uh, and regards your approach with a pitiful sigh. 
Greetings. He's barely able to force the word, his voice breaking as he speaks. What's wrong? He takes a deep breath, steadying himself. My, my sister Kalia and I watched the Bronze Brotherhood. That's it. Fending off multiple waves of Karis' forces when they tried to take the crossing. I was terrified, but she was um, exhilarated. In a way, I've never seen her so alive. He chokes back a sob. She, she got so fired up that she joined the Brotherhood the first chance she got. Shortly after joining, they sent her on a scouting mission with some other Brotherhood soldiers. But none of the party returned. They were all found dead at Deserter's Marsh. Oh, I'm sorry. Anything I can do to help? Shakes his head. Thank you, but... No, I, I just want to be left alone. Oh, bummer, dude. I was hoping we were gonna get a quest of some kind. Could you please retrieve the fucking locket and family heirlooms and stuff she had on her when she died? Something. But no. Alright, we can interact with this. What is that? Sorry, Fate Binder. The Bane have been spotted grow in growing numbers recently. Seal the old walls. Oh, shit. So that's right into the old walls, then. That's pretty cool. Have I been in here? Let's let's have a look. I don't remember if I went in there or not. <laughs> have a look here. I haven't. And there's some secrets. A raven shawl of rogues. Plus ten subterfuge. I don't think I need that. It might be good to have though, in case uh, you know. Just in case. See, the back wall of the Somme has long since crumbled away, revealing the old walls behind it. Oh, shit. Must be, uh... Trippy, living so close to the old walls, with, the, like, the bane and everything. Right, this is where I went in, right? This is where, uh... Where, um, the, the lesbians live? No. Oh, this is the Forgebound place. Cool. Master, the Fate Binder is here. Another woman, all right. Zenda, wait, wait, what is it? Zdenia, Zdenia? Okay. Turns and approaches you, her lithe body moving fluidly as she walks. Ooh la la. She stops before you, her, her stance solid and sure, but you see that she is standing lightly on her feet, ready to move if necessary. She never takes her eyes off of you, but you uh, know she is acutely aware of her surroundings. Fate Binder, may the fires of your forge never cool. She salutes you. I had hoped our paths, paths would cross. Word has reached my ears of your hand in, in removing the Edict of Storms from Sentinel Stand Keep. She nods uh, to you in a small salute. That was no small feat. I would ask how you did it, but I'm pretty sure you have more important things to talk about. In my years leading the Forge Bound, I have never heard of a Fatebinder accomplishing such something of such significance. It is an honor to meet someone of, uh, someone of such distinguished deeds. What can a servant of the flame do for you? Why have you come to Lethian's Crossing? What an odd question, Fatebinder. When you showed up in the forge, I thought you'd been sent to check up on me as my mission came directly from Tunon. Should you already know? Shouldn't you already know? I was tasked with creating an artifact to protect the forge bound from the bane. 
We have been delayed too often and lost too many of our own, so uh, it was decreed that something must be done. I created the Mage Bane Helm to keep the Bane at bay. Once the helm is in place, its magic will keep the Bane locked away inside the old walls. Uh huh. Why did you create a helm? The forge bound are crafters of weapons and armor, Fatebinder, not statues and baubles. I make what I know. It in it is also portable and can be moved easily or used in battle should its protection be needed elsewhere in the future. For the time being, though, I, it will remain here, protecting the forge bound. I have a job to do and cannot do it properly if we are constantly assaulted by outside forces. Why do the forge bound stay here if the bane are such a threat? What? No, there we go. This forge is in the shadow of the old walls, uh, uh, in an area rich with iron, right? We have ample supply of raw materials and the influence of ancient magics. It is an acceptable risk. And with the helm in place, the bane will no longer be an issue. Okay. Why were you tasked to create this item? Couldn't any forge bound here do it? All forge bound are masters of their craft, but each also has their special talents. The mage bane required someone whose skills were well above those who haven't been practicing uh, as long as I have. Tunon wanted a masterpiece, so he asked the master. How did you become master of the forge bound? I was trained at a young age to be a warrior, but never felt any connection to that life, except uh, when I was instructed on how to repair my equipment. The fire spoke to me. It sang when I stoked it, and told me where to swing my hammer to achieve the proper shape. I knew from that first moment uh, that it would be my life. I apprenticed with the forge bound and focused exclusively on my craft. Soon my skills were superior to everyone else. I took risks with magics uh, no one else dared to touch, and created some of the most powerful artifacts um, ever to come from the forge bound. Oh, really? It's a shame she won't uh, tell me more about it. Oh, so the Forge Bound are the, they're mage smiths. Uh, I can read this uh, little text here in case you don't remember. It has been a while ago, but we were told a little bit about it. I think in the early earlier on. Let's see. The Forge Bound are mage smiths sworn to carry us a service through their operations in the tiers are. Uh, let's see, though their operations in the tiers are overseen by Tunon and his code of court of Fatebinders. Each Forgebound forge uses magic as a tool to augment their personal craft, most commonly smelting and metalworking, but carpenters, tailors, and tanners are found in their ranks as well, and each mage strives to create that which is impossible with mundane hands. Most notably, the Forgebound are a are the sole masters of ironworking in the known world. Oh, really? That's interesting. Using spells of fire resistance to wade into the forge fires, uh, the forge bound can work iron at temperatures no other forge can match, and with hands and with a hands-on touch that no mundane smith could hope to achieve. Because of this vital skill, the forge bound are considered a strain a strategic war asset. Their uh, lives regimented and controlled so that the forges may churn out iron, arms, and armor without debate, delay, or distraction. Cool. <clears throat> so, let's see here. Our goals are one and the same. I was sent to secure the fort to ensure the forge bound can continue making weapons for the disfavored. Then you are in luck. Once the helmet has been placed, the interruptions caused by the bane will no longer be... will be no more, and the forge bond can truly return to their work. Right. I was sent to ensure 
All is well with the forge bound. Everything seems in order here. I will take my leave, then. As you wish, Fatebinder. I was just on my way to place the helmet. If you wouldn't mind, I'd like you to join us. The sutler have created a spot on the third tier. I will meet you there. And she moves out. Slowly. Ah. El Eldian. Okay. The sunburnt man dips his head in greeting. An outsider never arrives alone. At least that is what my mother always said. She knew what she was talking about. He nods thoroughly, thoughtfully, I mean, at his own words. I am Eldian. Welcome to Lethian's Crossing. You must be the one everyone is talking about. Tunal's fate binder, right? Eldian looks at you, looks you over and shrugs. Hearing stories about your exploits in Vendrian's well, I expected you to be twelve feet tall and shoot fire from your mouth. Can't always tell the contents of a pie from its crust, can you? What is this, Braveheart? Not really a fan of the way you use your weapons to say hello, but this isn't the first time blood was shed over Lethian's crossing, and certainly won't be the last. I won't pretend I'll miss the Brotherhood. Yeah, well, they were, um, they talked back to me. <laughs> but enough of my prattling. You didn't come here for a history lesson or to get my opinion of your grandeur. He waves his hand dismissively at his previous comments. The adjudicator sent you uh, for the Archon of Song, I assume? What can this all for, uh... Old fool do for you. What was that about the Archon of Song? Siren? Songbird? Feels like half the town's... Uh, half the town she's got mooning over her in that hovel near the river. It's on the first tier, if you want to find her. His brown knits. Feel free to make her... with To take her with you when you go. She cans his head slightly, banishing his sour expression. But seeing as you're not here for her, what can I do for you? Can I ask you some questions about Lithium's Crossing? If you have questions about her settlement, I'm the one to ask. I have the dubious distinction of being the oldest living resident of Lithium's Crossing. So I've been here for a lot of its history. Eldian smiles. Eyes... Eyes, hips, hair, and hearing might be failing, but my mind still remembers everything that's happened here. What would you like to know about? I'll do my best not to go on too long about it. I know I have a problem keeping my conversation short. Oh, goody. <laughs> Hold on. More coffee. There you go. <sighs> okay. Let's see, what can you tell me about this spire in Lethian's Crossing? Eldian shakes his head. Sometimes I wonder why Lethian thought it was a good idea to settle here. We already had a bane problem before the forge bound set up here. Now that they're uh, using the crossing as one of their main forges, the bane issue is even worse. Since the bane are drawn to magical energy, we have been on constant alert for them escaping. Ah, uh, huh. How'd you seal the door? I obtained a keystone that can be used to open or seal the door. One of Kairos' soldiers found it while they were looking for a way to seal the doors to keep the bane from escaping. The sealed door is only a temporary measure, though. It holds the bane back for now, but it won't last for much longer. That is why Tunan instructed Zedenia to create an artifact to protect Lethian's crossing from the bane. I see. 
Will you let me into the old walls? I'm afraid that's not a risk I'm willing to take, Fatebinder. Once the doors are unsealed, there's a good chance the Bane will flood into Lithian's Crossing. As much as I would love to help you, I can't endanger the town like that. Okay, let's ask something else. What are your thoughts about the Bronze Brotherhood? They were here since the crossing was founded. Oh, really? Lithian herself hired them to protect the settlement when it was just getting started. Fledgling town in the shadow of the old walls, they did such a good job, she kept them on as our peacekeepers. And that's how things went. They're a good enough sort, but when Narad offered uh, to pay them to help Kairos' forces, I knew we were in for some trouble. Taking pay from two employers is always going to end badly if you can't make both of them happy. On top of it all, it seems lately Ray Tommen is following a path only he can see, and I'm not sure. I'm not looking forward to what he finds at the end. Hmm. Right, Ray Tommen, that's their leader. That was the guy that talked back, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he, that's the bitch that ran. That's Ray Tommen. Let's see here. How have your interactions with the chorus been? I can't say I have a strong opinion one way or another, really. They didn't seem to care much about leaving the settlement behind. They put up uh, what seemed to be a token resistance when the Brotherhood drove them out. But once they left, I haven't really seen much of them. So they were here at one point. Okay. What do you think about the disfavored? I'm not sure what to say, honestly. I've heard rumors that the disfavored are a tough, disciplined crew. But the Bronze Brotherhood were able to force them out of the crossing without much trouble. I'm sure there must have been some extenu extenuating circumstances, but until I see something to change my mind, that's how I feel. Oh, really? They they were strong enough to push uh, the disfavored around. Okay. I'd like to ask you about the crossing's history. If you have questions about the goings-on in the crossing, I'm the one to ask. I've been... Here for more of its history than anyone else, he smiles. What would you like to know? Who was Lethian? The biggest pain in the ass I ever knew. <laughs> he turns bright red, blushing at his words. Then lets out a huge guff, guff of. Okay. Guffav? I don't know. I don't, I don't know how you're supposed to uh, pronounce that. I suppose it's like a sigh, right? I suppose I shouldn't talk about my mother like that. She was a mediocre merchant, but a great leader. The war in the Northern Kingdoms cost her a very lucrative trade route up north, but she managed to earn trades to her ships from Kairos, and for a short time she had a monopoly on grain, salt, and tin here in the tears. What did my grandmother say? Give a, man, give a blind man time and a pile of rocks, and he'll eventually hit a target. He shrugs. Not to say she didn't deserve it, but I think plain luck played a bigger part in her success than actual talent. But Kairos gives, and Kairos takes. In the next year, Lethian was stripped of her trade rights. Suddenly, she had a large staff, but no goods to trade, and no means to pay anyone. Uh, but she was a stubborn one, and knew she if she just kept at it, eventually things would turn around for her. She figured that the trade goods would come to us. The location was good enough. It's crazy how, how that would happen. So she decided to concentrate on making an existing local settlement into a center of commerce for the tears, and by the claw of her beast, claw of a beast, she did just that. I thought she was crazy choosing a town nestled up near the old walls, but apparently she knew what she was doing. It wasn't long after that it was renamed to Lethian's Crossing. With the bridges over the old walls, 
Um, this was the only place to go if you wanted to take three weeks off your trip. Eventually, she hired the Bronze Brotherhood to act as our local guards. We were big enough and had enough commerce that to warrant the protection, I see. Okay, let's see. What is it what is Kairos's interest in the crossing? Iron, plain and simple. Now that we have the forge bound here toiling away with the ore they pull from the river, we're being squeezed for our resources. Yeah, if you're uh, after a drink, better squeeze fruit than a stone. And it would seem that many people find us very juicy indeed. There was a merchant who tried to peddle iron rocks as magical because they came from areas near the old walls. One of the people he sold uh, to happened to be a disfavored courier. The courier then showed the rock to a forge-bound master who immediately recognized its potential for making superior weapons. It was brought to Karas' attention, and soon afterward, the soldiers and the forge-bound came to Lithian's Crossing. They came with such force, our options were either to comply with what they wanted or die. Well, you know, that's how it usually goes, I guess. Why does the Brotherhood want Lethian's Crossing? Land? Breathing, breeding stock? They've been here longer than I have, so maybe they consider it home, too. But Kairos' purse masters are um, no longer paying them to fight. And as a mercenary is... And if a mercenary is killing for free, something suspect. In the end, I suppose it doesn't matter. Ray Tommen will never let go. He feels he owns this town and aims to leap, aims to have it be his. I see. Um, I don't know if we want to ask about much more here. I'll ask about uh, Lethian, though. She was your mother. Of course. How do you think I became the Reeve of the Crossing? It's certainly not my storytelling or charm. Well, that's certainly not your storytelling. <laughs> I may be the oldest living resident here, and that's certainly not a good enough excuse to make someone a leader. Though, come to think of it, neither is just being the offspring of the former leader. He laughs. But, like it or not, that's how things are. My mother was a wonderful woman. She may not have been the nicest person, and she may have been an over, may have been overfound of a dalliance here or there or there but who wasn't his face sober oh so you mean to say your mother was loose is that what you <laughs> may her rest be forever free of disturbance well yeah you don't want uh, that lusty lady waking up as a zombie right all right i um oh shit i clicked the wrong thing Let's see, Eldian laughs, right. Roland asks for directions. I completely understand, the crossing can be a bit intimidating the first time one arrives, but it's not as complicated as it looks. The river is named Portoscur, okay, and it flows down the middle of the settlement. The waterfalls pouring over the old walls are sunrise and moonrise. The west waterfall is sunrise because of how it, the sun hits it in the morning. A moonrise got its name due to how it glows during uh, a full moon. The crossing itself is broken into district named after the waterfalls. The west side uh, of the river is the sunrise district and the east side is the moonrise district. There are different levels of Lethian's crossing. Let's see, the different levels of Lethian's crossing doesn't really have names, but people refer to them as the tiers. To them, uh, as the tiers, right? My home is considered part of the ground tier, the forge on this first tier, both in the moonrise district. Okay, I'll be on my way. Of course, I must go to the spire and make sure everything's ready. I'll meet you there when Zadenia is ready to place the artifact. 
And he too walks slowly out of here. Okay. Um, I think we'll uh, end this episode here because we're about 40 minutes in. And uh, I need a break from reading. It was a late night last night. So, I'm tired. And I'm an old man. Oh. Ah, thank you for watching another episode of Let's Play Tyranny. And uh, hope you stick around uh, for next time when we observe the helm in action. See you then.